everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bullish or Bearish. I'm Angela Chu from Success Options Group, and I'm here with my brother, Tony. And we're here bringing you another great episode talking about things that are going on in the financial area. And we're giving you like both sides of the story or even a lot of different points of view so that you can actually understand the topic better and actually make the decision that is right for you. Yep. And like Angela said, my name is Tony. And, you know, what we try to get at with these topics is to like give you those those viewpoints that 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 line of sight and the things that you're not so sure about and one of those topics that we have today for you is the commodity crisis um and that's a very broad topic but like the one that most people see the the easiest is the oil crisis right and crude oil and how it's going up past a hundred dollars 130 dollars a barrel right and you know I, I went to costco this morning Right. And there's this gas line. Normally I go pretty damn early. Right. And it's like 6 a.m. right when it opens. And there's usually no line. But today I went and the line's 10 minutes deep. I'm waiting 10 minutes to get gas. So this is one of those things where I feel that it's vital for you as an investor to know how you can invest in a commodities crisis. And that it is a good, good thing to try to learn how to do. So while he's talking about, oh, you know, it's a great idea. Remember, it's still a crisis. OK, so that means your risk because it's a crisis, right? Your risk while investing, if you don't know what you're doing, is a lot higher. I mean, he, he, it's right there in the name crisis. When anything is in a crisis, that means nobody knows what's happening. Nobody is for sure what the future is going to be. And so you don't know. You can't predict where it's going. So the risk level is very high. So here's, here's where I'll come back is that, you know, a lot of the techniques we teach, a lot of the option strategies and the other kind of um, strategies we talk about and we teach in our workshops or our private sessions really get at like how you adjust to different scenarios. So even the stock market has volatility. We've talked about that in prior videos. We, you know, there's crises in the stock market as well, right? And I still remember back like the, during the pandemic when it was really started and the oil went negative. I had a friend call me and say, hey, can I just like empty out my pool and fill it up with crude oil and they'll just pay me? It's like, no, you can't do that. But there is a better way for you if you're interested and you think that crude oil will increase in value over time. Right. There are ways. And, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more here, but like there's there's different option strategies or different things you can do in the futures market, which allow you to invest in commodities and in make money, you know, grow your investment. So what you're talking about sounds amazing, but the problem is, is that how many of us really understand the commodities that we'd be investing in? Because the thing is, is that one of the big problems with, you know, commodities is that the volatility in the commodities market, you know, is not as clear or as clear cut for most people because you don't know what's going on in that industry that might cause the price to suddenly go up or suddenly fall. Okay, yes, war, that's an easy one. But that's not the only thing that will cause commodities prices or values to go up or drop. So if you don't actually understand the commodity that you're investing in, like how can you even predict, you know, what's gonna happen with it? Are you just like, pretty much throwing a dart and hoping that it's like gambling, like throw a dart, hoping it's going up. Like, do you actually have any logic or math behind, you know, what you're doing? So I can hear your point. I mean, so just this past week, we saw something crazy in the nickel market, right? You saw a short squeeze in the nickel market. And, you know, we've talked about GameStop and other things in the stock market and short squeezes. So this was, it was very unique in the, in the nickel market and partly because of Russia and Ukraine. There was this kind of scenario, right? And here's where I'm going to come from, is that it's better to know than not to know, right? So you're talking about, well, how do I figure out, um, you know, how do I figure out what commodity you invest in? And the, the simple fact is you do have to do work. You do have to do research, right? But I would rather know than not know, right? And you know, with if you bundle in some of our low risk strategies in there, that will help you make money with these kind of things. So the thing about commodities, and you know, the easy ones to think about is like oil, 
and gold and silver. And those are the ones that are like natural gas. Like those are the ones that come out of these that come right to mind. But what it really comes down to is raw materials. And if you think about it, everything starts with a raw material, <laughs> like the basic building components of it, right? So, you know, just like with our stock market, uh, so, you know, choices, you don't have to be an expert in everything and you don't have to play in everything, right? So you can figure out what, I think most of us knew during the pandemic that oil was not gonna stay negative. People would start driving again. You would start consuming crude oil. So it does seem like it was a good bet or is a good investment to say, hey, okay, over the long term, crude oil will go up from here. So, okay, you're talking about in the long term, yes. But the thing is, these contracts have time limits, you know? And if you don't know what you're doing, you know, if you don't know how to, in a sense, manage these contracts, like, I do not want to like do a futures contract and end up being called up saying, hey, you know, where do you want me to deliver your tanker of oil? I have nowhere to put it. And even if you have nowhere to put it, yes, you can rent the warehouse, but then you have to pay for the storage of, you know, the commodity. I mean, yes, you can like sell it at the last minute on the commodity exchange. I mean, that is one good thing about it is that it's always open, but being forced to sell your commodity contract also means that you don't get to choose the price that you're selling it at. So you might have to take a loss, you know, because, you know, you if you don't know like what the right length of time for this contract is or, you know, what your target should be. So it really is about education. Like you need to actually be educated on knowing what it is in order to actually make this useful, you know? So it's also kind of like, well, is this actually the area that you want to spend your time putting your education into? You know, because there are so many different commodities out there. How many of them are you going to have to study? No, so that's, I mean, you don't have to study everything, right? So like, it, it really comes down to like picking your niches, right? Like we, like with the stock market, you're not picking every single stock. I mean, how many thousands, tens of thousands, maybe millions of companies are there, right? And, you know, you pick your industries, you pick your, you know, the well-known kind of things that you're, you're more comfortable with. That's the beauty with the futures market is it does allow, it's a lot, it's very similar to the options market, you know, and we, you know, we're big proponents of the option market, right? And having strategies that let you do it with, you know, the, managing the risk portfolio, right? So you, you, you figure out how much risk for your own, you know, your own comfortableness, right? And that's really what the futures markets lets you do. It's even more leverage. So you don't have to do as much money with it as well. All right. You just said something that really like, you have to re realize, yes, it's more leverage. You don't have to put as much money in, but you realize that you're buying hundreds or even thousands of contracts at a time. With the options market, you could just be buying one, two contracts. In the futures market, you're usually buying hundreds or thousands. If you're buying that many contracts, just a $10 difference, you know, in price, if it falls by $10, you can lose $10,000 just because you have that many contracts. I mean, so yes, the leverage is great because if you went up, you made a lot of money, but if it just falls a little bit, you can lose a lot of money too. So you really actually have to have like a huge margin, you know, ability to kind of balance yourself and keep yourself stable when the price fluctuates. Okay, so I mean, let me correct a little bit. It's not quite contracts, but like you have to figure out what one contract is equal to in the futures market. Like it could be a thousand barrels, but each one's a little bit different. So I, I get what you're saying there. Um, I think you still can use the option strategies that we teach and, you know, and that helps you let you manage your risk, right? But I think I'll go back to the idea that you, I want to know, and I think a lot of people would rather know how can I manage or hedge my risk, you know, with these raw materials, because I think we're getting into this phase where we're seeing it like there's, there's a pandemic or there's a war or, or whatever. And the thing that gets hurt the most is trade and different. So it's become more of a global economy over the last few decades, right? And everybody's trading and Russia does nickel and China does all these other rare earth min minerals. And without any kind of knowledge, without any kind of strategy in these areas, you're gonna be left out. 
And, and then you'll find all the companies you are investing. It's like, oh, we're having supply issues, right? We can't make more of our product because we don't have raw materials. And that, that's where I'm coming from. It's like the commodities market is something you need to develop more interest, more understanding of. So what I, what I agree with, with you especially, is that while like commodities trading is something that is great to know about, it really depends on each individual person and what the right plan is for them and having the education and the knowledge to make the right decision because commodity investing is one of the higher risk types of investing. It is a more speculative, you know, it requires a larger risk tolerance for fluctuations. And you have to make sure that you have the right mindset, the right training, so that you can actually take advantage of the good parts of commodity investing without letting the bad parts or the emotional panic of you know seeing fluctuations or all that kind of thing, without letting that actually impact like your methodical, like logical way of trading. Because that has always been like, as we talk about in our workshop, that is like the one of the worst things in investing is people get screwed in investing mostly because their emotions take over and they, the emotions make them do something that they didn't think through logically. And like, that is actually what screws them over. Not actually like something wrong with the market or something wrong with the type of trading. It's the emotional panic that we as humans or human beings, we feel panic, but it's about having the right plan for yourself and being able to stick to that plan and having the determination to like and the mindset to stick to your plan so that you don't screw yourself over and you actually get what you're planning for yep. that, that was well said so make sure you, you guys hit the like hit the subscribe put some comments down in the video um let us know what you think about this topic and make sure you sign up for a workshop if you're interested in learning more about this and for free so we'll see you next time for another episode of bullish or bearish